All right, y'all, you guessed it. It's that time of year again where we're going to cover the pros and cons of living in Tampa, Florida for 2023, and we're going to get after it right now. Okay, so if you've been bumping around the internet at all, I'm sure you've already watched a video like this. If you're considering making a move to Tampa, Florida, maybe you're just considering picking up a second home, an investment property, whatever it is. Maybe you're just considering vacationing to Tampa. That's totally fine. And you're looking at what the pros and cons of are living in the area. Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover that. I'm gonna give you five reasons that I love Tampa. I'm gonna give you five reasons that <laughs> I could do without, that's for sure, uh, from my experience in living in the area over the last four years. And it, I'm gonna give you some stuff that you probably have never seen on another video so make sure you stick around of course we're going to cover the basics we're going to talk about things like weather and traffic and those things but i'm going to give you guys some insider tips too that i think you're going to want to stay around so make sure that you stick around to the end because we're going to cover those and hey if we've never met before my name is juan alcala i'm a licensed real estate agent and i help people just like you buy sell relocate and invest here in the tampa bay area just know however you got to get hold of us all of my contact information is listed down below including a link to my calendar um, so if you wanted to schedule a time to chop it up, we can jump on Zoom and talk about that. But I wanna get right into today's list. And right before we get started, the thing I wanna share with you is I'm about to share my, our story of why we chose Tampa, how we came to that decision and this, the other cities we compared. Maybe that's helpful to you, but if it's not, the other thing I want you to know is down below are all the chapter markings, every single pro and con, so you can skip right past the story and get right to the meat if that's what you're looking for. But I do believe that you're gonna find a tremendous amount of value in the story that I'm about to share. All right, so the first thing on my list, number one pro is the reason that me and my family decided to pack up our life back home in Metro Detroit and make the move to Tampa, Florida four Decembers ago. And that is 100% the lifestyle. And I want to clearly define what that means to me because I know it's going to be different for every single person who's considering making a move to the Tampa Bay area. And one of those things, when I was looking at the overall quality of living, that was one of our biggest focuses. Now, I've shared this story with uh, the audience before, but if you're new here, I want to share it with you. You know, me and my wife, Kate, we had three kids. We had just had our, our youngest at that point, you know, baby Cora. And you know, we finally had the opportunity to make our move. I left corporate America in 2017. Uh, in January of 2018, we spent almost an entire month and a half visiting cities in Florida, trying to figure out what made the most sense. And we didn't do it blindly. I started a search probably like you did. I jumped online, typed in, you know, what's it like to live in Jacksonville, Florida? You know, the best places to live in Florida. I started doing those things. And that was prior to anybody like myself creating videos like this on YouTube. So you had to do the normal research, right? We were looking at things like quality of life, you know, and we would look at blogs to try to determine what that meant because it can be, you know, kind of ambiguous, right? We were looking at things like jobs. We looked at things like the age of the community. And when we moved down, we're a younger family, right? Now, I'm 45 years old. I'm, I'm an old young dad. <laughs> this is the best way I could describe it, right? So my youngest, you know, I was uh, 41 when we moved down, you know, and she was just a baby. So that would be, that would make me an old dad. But I share that with you guys because we didn't want to just be around retirees. And while I love the fact that, you know, people get to move here and they work their whole life to earn that opportunity, when you're raising a young family, that's not necessarily what you're looking for, right? It's great to have wisdom, but you may not necessarily want to be surrounded by retirees all day. So we had to take that into account. The other thing we were taking into account is the quality of the beaches and how aggressive the, the Gulf Coast was versus the Atlantic Coast. And, you know, for eight years, my wife and I believed that we were going to live on the Atlantic side of Florida. We've got, um, her, my father-in-law lives in Jensen Beach, Florida. We thought we'd end up in Jensen Beach or Stewart, both beautiful areas, right? But with a young family and us being water babies, we wanted to be surrounded by water. We wanted to be able to take our kids down to the beach every day. And if you're not familiar, the Atlantic Coast has some pretty gnarly currents. It also has the, you know, you know, you don't get to go out very far before you're in really deep water and there's definitely more marine life that's active over there that uh, people from the north might be a little bit nervous about. So, and I share this with you guys to open because I want you to kind of understand, you know, what our mindset was. So I started looking at things, like I said, like jobs, you know, the age of the community. Is the place getting younger or is it getting older? Those things were important to me, right? The average temperature. Um, or can we be south of the frog? 
cross line, all these things came into play. Probably the same exact reasons that you're looking at, you know, videos like this right now is trying to figure those things out. Is an area safe? Does it have good schools? You know, all the questions that anyone would ask if they're considering moving their family or moving themselves. What I found was when I was looking through this, areas like Jacksonville were on that list. Jacksonville is a, a young and up and coming city. It's growing in jobs because of its medical, which was really cool. But when we came, we, we came down in January and we did that on purpose because what I wanted to know was how much different is the weather going to be, right? Versus what I was leaving in the north. And when we arrived in that January and we stayed in an Airbnb for five days, it got so cold that the the water in the in the Airbnb never got hot. And I thought that the water heater had went out. Well come to find out that the water pipes were above ground. And in Florida, when it gets you know down to the high 30s or low 40s, your water tank, if it's outside, or the water pipes that feed the water tank in the inside they're outside are gonna struggle. And right away, my wife is like, time out. We're moving to Florida because we want to be right? In a subtropical temperature, not some place where it still gets cold. And it also had pine trees and it reminded me of the North. And listen, Jacksonville is a beautiful city, y'all. So don't lose sight of that. It's, it's a gorgeous city. But we discovered right away that that was not going to be for us because we were trying to leave that, right? And Jacksonville's far enough North where it still gets a little bit cooler in the winter. I won't say it gets cold. That's not true. To Floridians, it definitely does, but it definitely does not get cold. But I, I just want to share this story. We looked at places like Orlando. I, we arrived in Orlando. The traffic was so busy. That place is growing leaps and bounds. And at the end of the day, it felt kind of generic. Again, this is one man's perspective. This was my opinion, no one else's. And ultimately what it really boiled down to y'all, it's not about whether it's generic or whether it was authentic. We were beach babies. We wanted to be by the water. Our ideal lifestyle when we were moving to Florida was a flip-flop lifestyle, laid back, west coast like we figured it out right so when we arrived in tampa we knew we we're like this is the spot tampa was getting younger and it is a very young city at 36 years of age on average um, even by the beaches in the gulf coast when you go over leave tampa and you go over to clearwater and st pete pinellas county the average age there at the time of this recording is 46 years eight of, of age which is fairly young because when most people think of florida myself included i was thinking that like it's all retirees and that's where it is but it doesn't start to get older until you start to travel further south, at least on the West Coast. You know, we knew Miami wasn't for us um, for a few different reasons. It's a very busy lifestyle and it just wasn't what we were looking for. We were looking for something more laid back, right? I was leaving my corporate job. I have a real estate practice uh, back home in Detroit still to this day. I have a wonderful team that services up there, but you know, I, I got to move to Florida. I get to, not have to. So we really wanted to take these things into account. We knew we didn't want to be in the panhandle. Again, temperature got a little bit cooler than we liked. And the biggest thing there for us was the hurricane activities seems from anecdotal evidence here, right? But like when I was looking at it, it seemed to go there more often and the same thing in the south southeast of Florida too. So that was kind of how we looked at these things. We looked at an insurance just to see where uh, hurricanes went. We looked at things like alligator, like we did all the things that, that ignorant northerners would do, <laughs> right? And, and I learned so much more since being down here and I'm sorry to take up your time on the front of this video, but I think it's so important to talk about why. Why are you considering making Making that move because a lot of us don't answer those questions because ultimately what you're trying to accomplish at the heart of things you're not looking for a house right we need a home and we want a beautiful house or a home that's that's not the argument but what we're really looking for is lifestyle we're trying to match our ideal lifestyle the one that we have in our mind with the correct community and what Kate and I found was that Tampa ultimately provided that to us so forgive me and thank you for your time and allowing me to set up that you know, because I think, you know, the one thing that is missed in typically in these videos is why, why do people make this decision? Not just the pros and cons. Every area has pros and cons of it, right? There's good, the bad, and sometimes there's ugly, right? And that's just the reality of life. So I wanted to share that with you uh, first and foremost, before we move into it, that way you can understand what my thought process was and how I came about, you know, making our decision. And then maybe that helps you in your decision in the future. And again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach reach out. All my contact information is listed down below, but let's get right into this list, y'all. All right, so the number one pro of living in Tampa, Florida is by far the weather. And I know you've heard this before if you've watched any other videos. It's true, right? 
here's what happens. People have been asking me for the last four years, Juan, what is the biggest difference between living in Michigan and Florida? And there is a ton. But I tell everyone the same exact thing. You do not have to shovel sunshine. And the Tampa Bay area gets over 250 days of sun each year. And that is, I'm talking about full days of sunshine. The sun comes pretty much every day. And, you know, if you live in the area, you know, St. Petersburg, Florida is known as the Sunshine City. It is literally known after that. And the sun is always up, right? And it, the big change for us was we used to get gloom and doom in the winter, right? You get seasonal depression because it's just gray, gloomy, and dark, you know, cold, dreary. And it would be like that literally for a month. And it felt like the sun only came out two or three times a month for like a five or six month period. When we moved here, the thing we started to recognize is if it stays overcast for two or three days, you start to notice. And I don't know about you guys, that is a huge shift, right? And it completely changed our attitude and how we felt about things, right? Our average temperatures in the summer are in the high 80s, low 90s. It can get warm, it can get hot, y'all. There's no doubt about it, right? And we're gonna get into some of that stuff in the comments, so stay tuned. But the low temperatures in the winter are the low 60s. And on average, we're hitting high 60s, low 70s during the winter, which is the reason why people come here. The thing I love about Tampa is it's actually pretty uniquely positioned where we still get a little bit of a cooler winter. Um, we're not South Florida where people start losing their minds when it gets below 70. It definitely is a little bit weird when it gets to that temperature, but we have just this great climate here. where We kind of get the best of both worlds. We're kind of digging in, you know, pulling those cool temperatures in from, from the north a little bit without getting cold. You know, it's nice to put on a hoodie every once in a while to have a fire. You know, we use our, our heater only a couple days a year, but it is definitely, definitely a blessing to get the weather here. It's just so incredible here in Tampa, Florida. The second pro on the list is jobs and Tampa, Florida is absolutely on fire, right? We had like 9,800 people move here <laughs> in the last month, which is crazy. It's mind blowing when you think about that, but we're the unofficial tech hub of Florida. Over 25% of all the tech jobs in Florida are in Tampa, which is great. There are over 50 software companies here. It is drawing a lot of young talent. So, you know, if you're a Gen Z or a millennial, you know, considering making the move and you're concerned because you, you know, you're like, hey, I don't want to be retirees all day long. Again, our city's 36 years old on average. And you know, I'm talking about Tampa proper and Tampa Bay area is a little bit different, but like that's something to be, you know, to really take note of. And if that interests you, you really got to take a step back and check out what Tampa has to offer because there is a lot of investment happening here. Bill Gates is investing in the area. Love him or hate him. The guy's, he knows business and he's bringing uh, those types of jobs to the area. We've got uh, defense, you know, you got McDell Air Force Base. You've also got Raytheon and Honeywell that are in the area too. So those are there. Obviously we're anchored by Raymond James. We got Raymond James stadium where the Bucks play. So like, you know, the jobs is, is great here. Our unemployment at this time, I mean, we're talking in December of 2022, y'all, when I'm making this video for, for the following week, our unemployment is 2.7%, right? In a time when they're laying people off all over the country and, and, and the economics are, are, are concerning, you know, Tampa is still running strong. As I told you, people are still moving here. Tampa is on fire. Number three on our list is the beaches, y'all. The beaches here are world-class. You got Clearwater Beach, you got St. Pete Beach, and here's the dirty little secret. There is almost 27 miles of white sugary sand beaches on the Gulf Coast, okay? And while that's not Tampa proper, yes, I understand that. That is part of the Tampa Bay and the greater Tampa Bay area. Clearwater, St. Pete, Tampa, that's kind of the triangle they call it, but it's just absolutely incredible. And I didn't know till I moved here that, you know, whether it's Clearwater Beach, St. St. Pete Beach, Indian Rocks Beach, Bel Air Beach, um, Madeira Beach, <laughs> all of these beaches in between, they all have this beautiful white sugary sand beach. The inner coast Coastal waterway separating that and, and uh, Pinellas County where we live. I mean, we're just, just shy of two miles away from the beach itself. Indian Rocks Beach is our home beach and it's just absolutely incredible. You know, Clearwater Beach is, is uh, ranked as one of the best beaches in America almost once a decade. Same thing with St. Pete. You've got Siesta Key less than an hour south of us. We are absolutely spoiled rotten when it comes to these beaches, right? You can go out, take out the chair, take out, take out the family, take an umbrella and just spend the day. Our beaches are shallow and we don't get those gnarly currents that you get on the Atlantic coast, unless there's something crazy like a hurricane in the Gulf or something like that. And you don't go out and play in that water anyways. But our kids were able to get in the water and play around at a very young age. You know, Cora's is going to be five in May. And man, we've never been concerned about taking our kids to the beaches and just going, you know, checking it out. You know, you've got turtles that that uh, that come here every year and, and lay their eggs. And you see the sea turtles and we've got rays out there. You can see stingrays and you teach the kids the, the stingray shuffle. It's pretty cool. And 
nothing to ever be concerned of, right? So like, it's just been an absolute blessing. You will love the beaches here. All right, number four is the outdoor activities that you get to hear. We talked about lifestyle, right? Lifestyle was the thing that brought us down and the amount of things to do outside is, and I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't make a video a day and still not have things to talk about next year. <laughs> There's that many things going on. And if you like theme parks, you got bush gardens. If you like, you know, things like aquariums, you know, you've got uh, the Clearwater Aquarium. Tampa's got a zoo. There's the Science Center in downtown Tampa specifically for the kids. Like y'all, there are, every community has a a gorgeous park to go hang out. There's skate parks in the area. There are at golf courses galore. You know, you can, if you own a kayak or a paddle board, you know, depending on where you live, you can literally pop that thing in the back of your pickup truck and be in the water in minutes. You know, boating, fishing, kayaking, paddle boarding, kite surfing, you know, jet skiing. There's so many things to do. Pick a city and go dig into it. And we're not even talking about the entertainment, right? We're not talking about nightlife. We're not talking about things like restaurants, which we have a whole series on those things that we can get deeper on there, which are all incredible. Tampa is coming into its own, but like the history of Tampa too. I mean, Tampa and the cigar trade and, and being on in the bay there and, and having access to, to the ocean is just, it's brought so much diversity um, to the area and it's so, it's just so incredibly fun to go check out. You have to come and check out everything it has to offer. Biking, I mean, there's BMX courses in the area. You know, we've got ice skating rinks for people who are from the north that are concerned about that. I mean, we do have the Tampa Bay Lightning, y'all. They win a lot, <laughs> right? So there's those. You've got sports with between uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. You've got the, the Rays. You've got um, the Buccaneers who are having a terrible season, y'all. But like, you know, they call it Champa Bay, right? Because there's been so much winning going on here, but there's always something to do. you got the Yankees in Steinbrenner Stadium where they do spring training. You've got uh, the Blue Jays. They do spring training in Dunedin, Florida, which is a beautiful little marina town um, where the Blue Jays play. You've got the Tigers out in Lakeland. You've got the Phillies uh, down in Sarasota. You've got uh, the Pirates just over the bridge uh, uh, in the bay there in uh, Bradenton. I mean, there's so many outdoor activities, y'all. If you can't find something to do outdoors in Tampa, y'all, I don't know where you're looking because there is plenty of things to do. Another one on our list in terms of pros is the investment opportunities here. You know, there are a lot of people, both internationally and nationally, who grab real estate in the area. And there is a ton. We've got Airbnb opportunities. Not everyone allows that. We definitely need to get a little bit deeper on that. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. By the way, if you're getting any value from this, hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. That'll let people know that there is value in this video. And you will also be notified every time we make a new video like this. But what I wanted to get into is talking about the quality of investment opportunities with over 9,600 people moving here into the Tampa Bay Area just this month alone, you know, rentals are still continuing to be a driving factor here, right? Obviously, real estate is at a premium because when you live on a coastal town, you know, people get to move here. I've discussed that earlier and I want to follow back up on it. Tampa is not a have to live place, okay? It is a get to live place and those things are different. Yes, there are people here who have to, you know, um, to stay here and work here and live here. And, and, and I'm not uh, saying that one is better than the other, but what I'm trying to explain is that it's a destination, right? People work their whole lives to try to come here. And I know this because I'm from up north, right? I'm from the, the, the Midwest where people were like, hey, we're gonna retire to Florida. I, you know, I'm from Metro Detroit. They build cars. A majority of the people I knew came down here in the winter every opportunity they could. And their goal was to retire to the South. So I understand that mindset. And it is definitely something that is attractive. So if you are looking to pick up a vacation home, a second home, or an investment property, this is a great place to do it. Our real estate values are still holding strong even though it seems like the world is melting down around us and people want to come here and I think it's so important to understand that also if you're a resident of Florida right there is no personal income tax that was one of the main reasons we moved it was very attractive to me and my family to understand that we could keep more of our money just by relocating and obviously you know we wanted to take advantage of the weather so that was a huge win for us and we definitely want to make sure that you guys have that on your list too and one of the last pros I wanted to talk about when we're talking about the just the overall quality of life is our interaction with every one that we've met so far, right? It's easy to be, you know, come to a place and you're checking it out and you're starry eyed and, and bright eyed and bushy tailed and you're like, yeah, this is going to be incredible. And, you know, then 
a, a year goes along and then all of a sudden you're disappointed because you just feel like people are rude or it wasn't what you expected. And the thing I think is important to share with y'all is, you know, four years later, we have really fallen in love with the area. And, you know, I have spent the last year and a half of my life, you know, literally going and discovering this entire city and sharing it back with you. Um, so other people can learn and, and, you know, hopefully make a qualified decision about what it is to move here. But the thing I want to share with you is like, I think the people have been wonderful. You know, you'll read in, in, in conversations about how people are rude. And, and here's the thing, I'll say this, and I've said it before, wherever you go, there you are. If that's what you go looking for, you will surely find it. But most of the people that move here, you know, have moved here, they get to, like I was talking about before, like seven of the 10 people that we meet every single day are not from here, <laughs> right? They have relocated to the area and they have brought that attitude with them, you know, and it's been a wonderful experience. So I wanna share that because I know oftentimes people are like, how are the people, is it, is it gonna be, you know, is it gonna be what I believe it is? And I'm here to tell you that after four years, we have no intent of going back at all. All right, so now that we got through all the pretty stuff, the sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, and the things that I love the most, we need to get into some of the things that aren't great about Tampa. A lot of the things that you can live without. And the first thing that I'm gonna start with is 100% the bugs, okay? <laughs> because I'm telling you right now, I was not prepared, right, for the things that I have ran into. After four years, I have become accustomed, and I've started to understand that these things are, that's just what they are, right? And um, I, we have just full disclosure, none of my kids have ever been bitten by a fire ant. Um, the mosquitoes aren't nearly as bad as I thought they were gonna be. Our house hasn't been demolished by termites um, and no snakes have came into our house knocking on wood on that y'all <laughs> all right but they're they're there okay and there's a few other things that i think you need to to be aware of because the bugs you know we live in a subtropical climate and if you move if you're moving from you know the west where uh, bugs aren't really an issue you know god bless you because we're, we deal with that here right Everything is wet during the summer. We have a rainy season, and that tends to give a lot of opportunity to, to do things like grow mosquitoes, okay? Now, here's what I'll say. I don't hang out outside in parks after the dark. You're just asking for problems, right? Like, yeah, you're gonna get bitten by mosquitoes. That just makes sense, unless you're just gonna lather up, you know, with DEET or whatever else you gotta do to keep those things off you. We have a, a screened-in pool and a screened-in lanai. So we, our experience with bugs is really not bad, okay? I live close enough to the water. We usually have a pretty good coastal breeze. It tends to keep a lot of those things down. And we're mindful of those things. Like, I won't leave a bucket of water laying around the side of the house. That's just a mosquito nest waiting to happen. And so don't do that. There are these other little unique bugs here in Florida. When you're in a park and it could be in the middle of the day, you step into the shade and they just bite the snot out of you. They're called no see -ums, okay? And the reason they're called no see is because you can't see them, E-M apostrophe em <laughs> and they are like they're worse than the mosquitoes they bite they hurt man it is something like just drives you crazy right but that's just part of it now again i won't leave wood laying around outside of the house either because that's how you invite termites it could become a problem our home is a block home it tends to to withstand things like that but we have a wood wood framed roof like and wood frame walls so that could be a problem but you know we take care of those pests we have uh, a pest person come to the house and make sure that they uh remediate that on a regular basis. You do as much diligence as we can. You will see ants in your house. And I've shared the story about the cockroach, you know, and listen, I just want to, let's be honest, right? Like whoever named the palmetto bug, uh, the palmetto bug instead of a cockroach, shout out to that guy. He's one of the best marketers in the world because when we came to Florida and you discover these things and you call it a roach, people are like, no, it's not a roach, it's a palmetto bug. No, 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 that's a roach, y'all. Just so we're all on the same page. That is a roach. And these things are huge, y'all. And I shared this story. I have to share it every single time we talk about this because it just it was one of those moments, right? We had just moved into our home. We had been here about a, a, a about a week. One of my daughters uh, came out of her room and she was she was screaming hysterically. She's like, there's a bug in the room, oh my God. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go in the room and take care of it, right? So I go in this room and, um, you know, I walk in the girl's room and I walk over to the corner. I'm like, where is it? She points to it. So I walk around the corner and here's this thing, man. It is like, it felt like it could have been this big in my mind, right? But it was like that long. And these things are not attractive. Let's put, put, put one of those bad boys right up here there. Oh, they're scary. And the thing I didn't know being an ignorant northerner was that these things fly. They fly, y'all. And they play dead. They play dead. It's ridiculous. 
And when I went over there to assess the situation, <laughs> This thing flew up like uh, like Neo in the Matrix and he leaned back and it was just like, it spread its wings and I came out of that room screaming like a little girl. Like my daughters and me, same page. Screaming, ridiculous, right? And at that point I'm like, I don't know if I wanna go back in there, right? I'm trying to uh, trying to get weapons to go in there and fight this thing. I grabbed a, um, a chancla or, or a flip flop for those of you who don't know. Uh, grab a flip flop, I wanted to put a helmet on but I didn't to go back in there and, and hit this thing. And, and what happens when you hit a palmetto bug with a flip flop is it explodes. It's not good. It's not good, y'all. It's not good. And here's the thing. They come in your house. Uh, cool. The cool thing is, unlike the cockroaches that we know of, or we knew of in the north, where if you ever saw a cockroach in your house, you might as well light it on fire because they, they, they nest there. There was more than one. It was just a bad situation, right? Like, it's bad. Okay, palmetto bugs don't nest in your home. They nest outdoors and they typically come inside when it's raining or something, you know, there's an opening or whatever. Like, so like that was helpful for me to, I had to learn these things, right? But it's something to be mindful. And, I, and forgive me for going on this bug tangent, but like, it's important to know these things, right? Like there are lizards all around the house and we call them Louis. I don't know what kind of lizards they are, but they're great. They hang around the house, they eat bugs, which is awesome, okay? Um, but there are geckos, right? We have geckos, beautiful lizards, but they tend to hang out around your doors. Why? Because lights come on, bugs come that way and they eat them. Well, they also like to come in your bathrooms because your bathrooms tend to have a little bit of moisture in them, right? So like they'll come in the bathrooms every once in a while. So like we had to learn to live with some of these things obviously we try to take care of them but they get in your home these things happen and it's something to be mindful of and it is a con worth noting because it is definitely something that it will shock you right there's been a snake in my yard before um, a black snake they tend to be territorial have never you know been bitten like kids have never been we've never had a, a problem in the house the dog's never been bitten either you know no red ants problems like but they're there these are things that we need to be mindful of all right another con that i was not ready for was traffic you know um, again living in the motor city we had a lot of traffic that was not abnormal but when i moved to tampa what i didn't recognize was how old the infrastructure is tampa's an old city right built at the turn of the century it was built with freight you know and and uh cargo in um you know maritime industry so you know it it wasn't really built for you know this humongous influx of the population that we have today now relatively speaking if you live in new york or chicago laugh at tampa traffic but it can get pretty tough especially when it gets down to downtown Tampa anywhere around rush hour can be a little bit difficult Pinellas County things tend to move a little bit slower there and the biggest thing you need to be aware of um, and if you're from out of the area is that our lights take a really long time they just take a long time to turn usually a minute and a half or more sometimes you can be at a stoplight for two and a half three minutes which is crazy because of the, the way the laws work and the other thing when it comes to traffic is because there are so many people from out of the area they all bring these crazy driving habits and I got to tell you most of, of the poor driving that I've seen as an adult has happened in this state. Um, our vehicles, I've, I've told this story before too, but um, we were hit three times in the first first three years we lived here. Each <laughs> each of those years, we made it through the fourth year unscathed, um, which is fantastic. But the first three years, we were hit twice in a parking lot, right? And, you know, God bless them. They were some seniors. It's just part of the process, right? But like, you need to have your head on a swivel. I got to tell you, I, I don't know that I would ride a motorcycle. I, I have kids and I can't do it, right? Just because between the cell phones and all the crazy driving, I just wouldn't entertain it at all. Now, this one is something that recently changed. And I think it's super important to take note of, right? Is the cost of living here has shifted dramatically. Um, we went from being one of the best values nationally um, in the cost of living. And that was in every category, right? From housing, rents, uh, groceries, uh, everyday goods, restaurant, entertainment, um, all of the categories. We went from being at you know one of the best values in the United States to now we have fallen to number 45. Uh, in housing so because everybody's found out about Tampa so that's something to be aware of and just the overall cost of inflation with the amount of people that have moved here in the last two and a half years has driven the prices up just about on everything so um, I'm not proud of the fact that that now we're seen as a, an expensive place to live but the one thing I do want to do is put that in perspective because right now at the time of this recording the average home in the Tampa Bay area costs four hundred thousand dollars and the average home in America costs four hundred thousand dollars so when I say that we've fallen in the bottom uh, to 40, number 45 on that list in terms of big cities, 
I want to put that in real perspective, right? Because you might live in an area like San Diego or Seattle or the Pacific Northwest or uh, Illinois or the Northeast where, you know, the average home is $650,000 and here it's 400 grand and our property taxes are significantly lower. So while moving from rural Mississippi to Tampa is gonna be a huge adjustment, and for you know uh, tam Tamponians, right, people who have lived in Tampa all their lives, it has been a dramatic shift over the last two years, right? There was an article recently, and I'll, and I'll pin it up here, that said you now have to work 23 more hours every single month to keep up with what it costs to live here at, at, in, in the beginning of 20, 2020 and the end of 2019. That's a lot. Y'all, so it has gotten more expensive. We are less expensive than most of the other coastal areas in Florida. Um, we're less than Naples. We are less than Miami by a long shot. We're pretty on par with Orlando, and we're a little bit more expensive than Jacksonville at the time of this recording. So it's something to be mindful of. Again, I still think we're a deal to be able to live on the water. If, if you compare us to any of those other areas that I may, you know, mentioned earlier, you'll laugh at the cost. You'll laugh at our taxes. Like it's just not there. The big thing that is expensive. Is is insurance, right? So like that's been a huge adjustment. Um, you know, in terms of where things are. And I didn't mention it, but we just went through Hurricane Ian. I should have included that in weather. And, and obviously that's brought a lot of challenges on the insurance side. Florida has been a challenge with insurance for the last four years anyways, and that didn't make anything better. So that's also helping raise the cost of living here overall. So not something to be proud of, but it's just the reality of it. Do I think that we're expensive compared to where I used to live in Metro Detroit? It's actually, we're, we're paying essentially the same amount of money, but now my quality of life isn't, has increased. But you may be watching this from an area where it's less to, you know, your, your, the median home price might be 350,000. So it's going to be an adjustment, right? So it's something to take note of. All right. Now with the pro of weather, we also get the con on the other side of this. And you know, I'm not going to hide this from anybody, right? Because <laughs> we moved down and experienced the same thing that you're going to experience if you choose to call Tampa your home. And it, it's the fact that, you know, it gets warm here in the summer. When I mean, I mean hot y'all, it, it, it was a huge adjustment. I was not used to um, that amount, that intense of, of heat and humidity for that time period. Where we moved from, we had 10 or 15 day stretches where it would get in, in the mid to upper 90s and humidity would be through the roof. That was not uncommon every summer. But to have you know 90 degree temperatures on a day in day out basis for three and a half or four months out of the year and have daily rain, it was definitely a, a, a difference, right? And I noticed it right away. And I remember the first summer we came here, right before the summer started, it was uh, it was like February. I was over um, in Lauderdale and we were doing an event with some real estate agents. And I, I, I was talking to, to one of the inspectors there and he told me, he's like, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I said, no, why? And he goes, it's like waking up to a Labrador retriever breathing two inches from your face. <laughs> and I remember that and I was like, nah, I can't be that bad, right? Because it was like our first year and I was like, I'm going to make this happen no matter what. And that was a little dramatic, right? It was definitely dramatic, but it wasn't that far off, right? I'm not going to lie. Like it gets hot and it just never stops. Like the thing that is strange to me is the fact that if, you, if I walk out to go to the gym at 430 in the morning, it's still 84 degrees and my car will be covered in just water because it's so humid outside. And then the sun comes up in the morning and it cooks off that humidity. So it's like being in a bag of clams, man. It is the weirdest thing in the world, right? So there are basically two seasons in Florida. There's outdoor season and there's indoor season. And I'm I, tongue in cheek on that, right? Cause like we still do our outdoor activities, but we do them early and we do them late. You don't really play around in the middle of the day. And that basically goes from, you know, we're talking about uh, the middle of June through uh, the middle of October. That's really where that's going on. And it, and it falls in line with hurricane season. Technically hurricane season is, is made in November, okay? Um, so it's in there, anything can happen. And, and you know, I just shared with you guys that Hurricane Ian just came through and that was pretty gnarly y'all. It was a, a, an interesting experience. I did an entire video on that. If you wanna see that, I'll link it up here. It was a scary experience, I'm not gonna lie. I, I just, I wasn't ready for what I saw afterwards. And we didn't have that impact here in Tampa. That's something to be aware of. We are so fortunate here um, in 
I'm always gonna knock on wood before I say this, but Tampa has not been directly hit by a hurricane in over 104 years. And that is fascinating to me. And it was, again, that was a huge part of the reason why we chose this city to call home because, you know, the, the, the history says that it should be in good shape, but our friends to the south in Cape Coral and Fort Myer, man, they were just rocked this past summer. And it was just one of those things. And it is a scary thing. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you it's not, right? But every single year, this happens in this state. And every single year, the state recovers from it. And every single year, people choose to call this home. And if that's something that, that you can't get over, then you definitely want to, to take a deeper look at that and say, okay, I, this is probably not for me. But man, time that we've spent here, what I've seen this community do, the way that they pull together to get things uh, rebuilt and taken care of, like it's just given us so much confidence that this is a place that we are going to call home for the rest of our life because we absolutely love it. But I think it's important, absolutely important to take note of that. All right, and my number five con here, and this is, this is the personal gripe, um, there's no doubt about it, is there's just sand everywhere. It, it's everywhere, right? Our soil is sandy soil. It just gets in everything. It's in the car. We don't have any carpet in the house, thank the Lord, because I'd don't. i lose my mind. You know, we have uh, uh, hard floors. So we have uh, tile and we have hardwood in the bedrooms. And I would encourage you to have hard floors, especially at least on the first floor. It's nice to have carpet, because then you don't have to rub your feet off every night. It's kind of weird that way. Uh, but sand is all over the place. We love the beach. We're beach babies, but you can't go to the beach and not bring it back home with you, right? It gets in everything. It's in the car. We have all of the WeatherTech floor mats throughout the entire vehicle, which is cool because now all I do is brush it off and it's fine. But the but the idea of having lush carpet in my car, that's not even, like, it's so far off the reservation, it's not happening. You know, it's just, it's not going to be there. And then you bring it home and it tracks in the house and it ends up in the dishwasher. I'm sorry, it ends up in the washing machine and then it ends up in the dryer and it's just all over the place. It's in the kid's bedroom. And again, this is a personal beef. And if you never even go to the beach, it's still going to find its way into your life because the soil is sandy, right? Everything about it outdoor in Florida is sandy because we're so close, you know, to the water. Remember y'all, Florida is a peninsula. Okay. Florida is in the ocean. A lot of the times people just look over that. Like, what do you mean? Like, no, it's in the ocean. And if you live in Pinellas County, which again is to the West of Tampa, right? You live on a peninsula on a peninsula in the ocean, which is just crazy talk, right? So it's, it is definitely a personal gripe, but it's one that I, I want to share with people because like, if you like having a clean car all the time, it's going to drive you nuts, right? If you like having a perfectly clean entry with nothing on your feet, it's going to drive you nuts. If you've got a dog that runs outside and comes back inside, you better get that Dyson. Uh, you better have that thing right by the back door, man, because you're going to be doing it all day. It just seems like we could vacuum our floor three times a day and it's still going to have sand and dirt all over it just because the amount of dirt, I'm sorry, the amount of sand that is uh, outdoors and everywhere we go, it's just part of life, right? So, hey, but if that's the worst thing you got to deal with, it ain't that bad, y'all. And having said all of that, the biggest thing I want you to know is the fact that we would choose this every single day of the week, right? I've, I've been blessed enough to have traveled a lot of places in this country and a lot of them are beautiful. I could see ourselves calling the mountains home one day, um, you know, but that wouldn't be our full-time residence. We're always going to be a resident of Florida and particularly Tampa because we absolutely love it here. Um, we just believe that, you know, if your focus is about lifestyle, if you're trying to accomplish that laid back flip-flop, you know, just really take what the world has to offer and the outdoor space and the sunshine, then you are in the right place because Tampa is the spot and it is going to absolutely knock your socks off. This city has so much to offer. No way I could cover it all in one video. I, this thing's long already, right? But I just wanted to give you guys one man's perspective. If you have any questions, right? Like I said, I'm a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the Tampa Bay area. And we are at your service. All of my contact information is listed down below. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.